Hello guys, it's me, Captain Rolls. It's certainly been a long time since I've uploaded anything up on here, hasn't it? I've been meaning to upload content again, but life and lack of motivation and ideas have been holding me back, and I do apologize for that. I know this video isn't particularly long and probably won't make up for my long absence, but I wanted to share with my followers and friends what I've been up to this past weekend. To celebrate the weekend of my 30th birthday, my parents and I took a five-hour road trip to visit and spend a few days with my longtime friend Corey, who is better known as Plowbender Studios on YouTube. While I was there, we took a trip to this really awesome place called Doolittle's in Dubois, Pennsylvania. It started out as a creamery back in the 90s, but then a number of years ago, the man that owned the place, Dr. Rice, started collecting a number of vintage rail cars, and then proceeded to convert each and every one of them into a number of shops, as well as a brewery, a bar, a small dinosaur park, and even a couple of diners. Seeing all these different pieces of railroad stock from different eras and companies was a real sight to behold, especially this 1903 Pullman car from the Elgin, Joliet, and Eastern Railway which apparently was used as the private car for the 26th President of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt. It was retired in 1963 and then bought and used as an art studio for a good number of years before being donated to Doolittle's in the 2010s and had a protective shed built over it. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get in there, but from what Corey has told me, the interior was supposedly restored to as close as possible to the state it was in back when Teddy Roosevelt toured around the country in it. And you can actually rent it out as a hotel room, meaning you can truly enjoy all the presidential luxuries that early 1900s railroading could provide. Along with the presidential carriage, in the foreground, Doolittle's even managed to acquire a pair of passenger cars that were used by the old Ringling Brothers Circus. Like with the Pullman, I wasn't able to go inside either of them, but that was mostly because they were still doing work on them at the time of me being there. Not sure what the plans are for the interiors, but the fact that they were able to get these historic passenger coaches at all is incredible, and I'm glad they're preserved and people are able to see them. I didn't get any pictures of it, but Corey and I went and got lunch at the Railcar Pizza, which was one of the restaurants that they had at the site. They had really good thin crust pizza, with a variety of different topping choices. Needless to say, I love their pizza so much that I insisted for us to go back there the following day with our families for dinner. May as well end the trip on a high note, right? Anyway, the main reason for us going to Doolittle's was this expansive model train display that they have set up in this old New York Central baggage car. Corey is actually a regular volunteer here, helping to repair and maintain the layouts in all of the models. They have saps for Lionel Thomas O-Gage, N-Gage, the old LEGO 9-volt system, but most of their displays are made up of HO scale, the main display being the prime example. He was super cool about allowing me to run some of my models on the layout. Unfortunately, I didn't get that much time to take footage or pictures of my models running, as most of our time was spent doing work on all the layouts. The Hogwarts Express display being especially frustrating with the model constantly derailing. <sighs> Never was able to fully fix that. But I hope you'll enjoy what I was able to film here. This is actually one of my more recent additions to my collection a Bachman Jr. Jack the Saddle Tank set from the UK. I've actually heard certain people giving the little baby J94 a bad rap, so when I saw this in a listing on eBay, I jumped at the opportunity. When it eventually arrived, I was immediately smitten. The locomotive had a nice amount of weight for its size, the paint application was very nice, and the mechanism itself was very smooth. Sure, it doesn't have that much in terms of detailing, but it more than made up for it with its overall charm. Plus, the plank wagons were even fitted with NEM pockets and had a surprising amount of detail for being in a starter set. It is even set up to where you can easily put in a DCC chip. Anyway, Little Jack and his small consist certainly got a few looks from both kids and adults alike, and I don't blame them. Definitely not the most realistic thing in my collection, but definitely one full of fun and color. May have to bring him back to Pennsylvania again, see just how many wagons we can get him to pull. I bet you do, Corey. I bet you do. 
Anyway, the other engine shown here is my Bachmann PRR GG1, which I actually bought a year or so ago as part of a charity listing on eBay. Wasn't sure what to do with it, but due to my affinity with the locomotives of the PRR, and the fact that the money spent would go to charity, I couldn't say no. This is another very beautiful addition to my collection. The model ran smooth as silk and pulled away with any load it was given. While Corey and I would have preferred a rake of Pennsylvania Railroad passenger cars behind it, we didn't have any of those on hand, so we settled for this expansive rake of Shawmut Line hopper cars, as well as a track cleaning car right behind it. Needless to say, I was stunned that I was easily able to pull all of them by itself. Next time I bring I'm going to have to bring all the Pennsylvania Railroad carriages that I have. It would look fantastic, I feel. Anyway, that's all the clips I was able to take, but here are some ones that Corey has done on our final day. We've got my Railway Series Duck here, which he actually recently fitted new sandboxes to, as well as a Bachman Class 08 in VR Black. I actually bought this thing not long before I actually came down to Pennsylvania. You can probably guess what's going to happen to that thing in the near future. Corey had also taken footage of a couple of the resident models here as well, but I wanted to leave them out so he had at least some clips that he could upload onto his channel if he wanted to. You can find a link to Plowbender Studios' channel in the description of this video if you'd like to see some more of his content. Anywho, I've rambled on long enough. This wasn't a long video by any means, but I'll see if I can make up for it the next time I go down to Pennsylvania. I'll try and become more active on YouTube again, but we'll have to wait and see what the future holds. That's all for me. Have a good day, everyone, and thank you for watching the video.